Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are this day indeed celebrating All Saints Sunday, thanking and praising God for the saints. Just a few minutes ago, those saints who have gone before us, those who worship the Lord Jesus Christ with us, those who serve the Lord with us, and now those who are in the very presence of the Lord. We also rejoice and celebrate with the fact of all the saints, those living here on this earth. And the Bible defines the, the word saint as those who have been called by God to belong to Him, by faith, believing and trusting in Christ as Lord and Savior, and living in the Lord's love, living in the Lord's forgiveness, living in the Lord's power and strength saints of God. So we rejoice on this All Saints Day. Sometimes, though, when we hear that word saint, we kind of think of perfect, you know? Oh, they're very saintly, you know, perfect and holy. But even though we are saints called by God, we're by no means perfect because we continue to be sinners as well. Saints because of God and through Jesus Christ, but sinners by, by nature. And so there's that ongoing struggle that we have, but we are saints as we believe in the perfect one, Jesus Christ, who grants us forgiveness. But because we are sinners, there are times that that affects our relationships, even as saints. Our relationships with friends and family, our relationship with God, our relationship with brothers and sisters in Christ, our relationship with the world. And today in our reading from Acts, as we continue to move along in our series of, of going through the book of Acts, today in our reading from Acts we see two great saints, Paul and Barnabas, at odds with each other. Two great saints who have such a disagreement that it causes them to separate and go on separate paths. This text comes after last week's test, which, text, which was a very pivotal time in the church. As the church leaders were gathering together in Jerusalem to discuss a, a, a doctrinal issue, what are they going to do about all the Gentiles who are coming into the church? There are some saying that they have to first become Jews before they can become Christians. And Peter speaks, and Paul speaks, and James speak, and they all talk about the fact that, no, they don't have to follow the Old Testament laws. No one does, because we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ faith alone, a very pivotal point in the church focused on grace alone, faith alone, Scripture alone. Now we come to the text today and there's a disagreement, but this isn't a doctrinal issue between Paul and Barnabas. It's a disagreement about strategy. How are they going to carry forth the mission? Paul and Barnabas are talking about it's time to go on another missionary journey. We heard about the first one they went on, going to Derby and Lystra. Well, now they're talking about the fact they need to go back and visit the congregations there to encourage the Christians, to strengthen there. And as they're talking about going back, Barnabas says, and let's take John Mark with us. And Paul says, no, let's not. Chapter 13 verse 13 of Acts, the first missionary journey, all it says is that John Mark was on the journey with them and he left and he went back to Jerusalem. Why did he leave during the first missionary journey? We don't know. Lots of speculation, lots of thoughts, lots of ideas on what it, it may have been. But now as Barnabas and Paul are having this discussion, this disagreement as they're talking about it, Paul talks about the fact that John Mark left the work that needed to be done. One thought is that John Mark lacked courage. 
The missionary journey was tough. Their lives were threatened, were in danger. And one thought is that John Mark said, I can't do this. And he left and went back to Jerusalem. Some time has now passed since that first missionary journey. And Barnabas feels that things have changed in the life of John Mark, that he can do the task now. So Barnabas wants him to go. Paul says, I don't think anything's changed. I think he's going to desert us again, and he doesn't want him want to go. So Barnabas is coming at this and saying, I believe John Mark is beneficial for the mission. And Paul says, I believe that John Mark is detrimental to the mission. And neither one of them budge. They are very convicted in their beliefs regarding John Mark. So much so that it causes them to go on separate journeys. Barnabas takes John Mark and goes to Cyprus. Paul takes Silas and goes to Syria and Cilicia. Now, it's important that we don't read into this sharp disagreement, that we don't read into this hot tempers, angry words, bitter comments, bridges burned between Barnabas and Paul. It's not like Barnabas said, fine then, I'll take John Mark and be on my way. And Paul going, fine, I'll take Silas and be on my way. No. Rather, they recognize the disagreement between the two. And they agreed to go separate ways. For the sake of the mission. For the sake of the mission that they would separate and go their ways. And the text tells us that the church in Antioch blessed their journeys as they went forward to share the message of Jesus Christ. In the book of Acts, this is the last time we hear about Barnabas and John Mark. They're not mentioned again in the rest of the book of Acts. The rest of the book is all about Paul's missionary journeys and all those who were with him on those journeys. But Barnabas and John Mark are both mentioned again in Scripture in Paul's letters, which gives us the indication that even though there was this time of separation for the sake of the mission, that there was a coming back together again. A coming back together again with Paul and Barnabas but even more importantly, coming back together again with Paul and John Mark. Second Timothy, the last chapter, as Paul's writing to Timothy and it's getting close to his death, Paul knows his time is short. And he writes Timothy asking Timothy to come to him and then he also says, when you come, bring John Mark with you because he is helpful to my ministry. There was separation for a time, but then there was the reconciliation and the coming back together again. Very interesting text. And I take three things away from this text as I consider Paul and Barnabas and this disagreement that they had. And the first thing is that in this disagreement that neither one of them lost focus of Jesus Christ and the mission. That continued to be their focus. Even in the midst of this disagreement, they would not allow this disagreement to get in the way of who God had called them to be and what God had called them to do. And they continued to press on, even though it meant having to go separate ways. The second thing I take from this text is that Paul and Barnabas did not see each other as the enemy. That happens in disagreements, doesn't it? That happens when we don't agree. That attitude comes up that that person is our 
enemy. No. Paul and Barnabas didn't see it that way. We hear that in the Apostle Paul as he writes in Ephesians chapter 6 and he describes who the enemy is. The enemy is Satan. The enemy is sin. The enemy is evil. Not people. God loves people. God loves all people. God sent his son Jesus Christ to die for people. All people. People aren't the enemy. Now sometimes Satan dupes people into following him. Our own sinfulness leads us astray. But the enemy is, is, is the devil, is sin. And that's why in Ephesians chapter 6, Paul says, put on the full armor of God each and every day. Fight the good fight. So Paul and Barnabas didn't see each other as enemies. As they went their separate ways, they considered to, to see each other as brothers in Christ on a mission for the Lord. The third thing I take away from this text is that Paul and Barnabas did not allow this disagreement to affect their other relationships. They did not allow it to affect their up relationship, their relationship with God, as they continued to be faithful in being in the Word, continued to be faithful in worship, continued to seek to grow in the grace and the mercy and the forgiveness and the love of Christ as they continued to grow up in the Lord. They didn't allow this to affect their in relationships, the relationships with other Christians as they went and they visited other churches in order to encourage them and strengthen them, but also to be encouraged by them. Pressing on and pressing forward in this mission, in this fight against Satan, against sin, against evil. And I, I just have to believe that Paul must have had this disagreement on his mind with him and Barnabas as he's writing to the Corinthians and the huge division that was happening within the Corinthian church as he writes to them, this isn't good. This should not be you need to be one in Christ. Let there be no division among you. Paul understood that. Paul and Barnabas didn't allow this disagreement to affect their out relationships, the relationships with the world, the mission that God had called them on, the mission that God calls all the saints on, all of his followers, to be witnesses in the things we do and the things we say, the way we live. To be a witness to the world of the love and the grace and the forgiveness and the power and the hope that comes only through Jesus Christ. Paul and Barnabas separated for a time, but they didn't quit. They didn't quit. They continued to seek to grow in their relationship with God. They continued to seek to grow in their relationship with other brothers and sisters in Christ. They continued to seek in growing and proclaiming the message of Jesus Christ. In the midst of this disagreement, and God blessed them. He blessed both missionary journeys. More people were seen. More people came to Jesus Christ as God blessed both journeys with one mission focus. The text reminds us that even among the saints, the people of God, there are disagreements in regards to strategy, in regards to how things are to be done. 
And even as we gather together as church, as we try to do church, we don't all agree on how it should be done. That happens. Sometimes there's disagreements in regards to how we do it. The important and significant thing that comes out from this text is how do we deal with that? And how does that affect us? And how does it affect our relationships? How does it affect our relationship with God when there's a disagreement going on? God desires for us to draw closer to Him, to be in His Word, to be in worship, to be in prayer. How does it affect our our relationship with brothers and sisters in Christ? God desires that we continue to meet with one another, to be with one another, to encourage one another, and to be encouraged. And God desires for the mission to continue reaching out. That even in the midst of disagreements, of not seeing everything exactly the same way, the importance is on being witnesses for Jesus Christ and Christ crucified. And to remember who the enemy is. It's not the person we have a disagreement with. Our enemy is Satan. Our enemy is sin. Our enemy is evil. But Christ defeated our enemies. Christ came and He is the victorious Lord who defeated through the cross, through the empty tomb, the devil and sin and evil and death. He defeated it all. And Jesus Christ is the Lord of the church even when there is disagreement and there is division. He continues to be Lord of lords and King of kings. He is over all. And it is only through the victorious Christ that there can be unity. In Christ and Christ alone. And it is Christ who brought Paul and Barnabas back together. It's Christ who brought Paul and John Mark back together. And it's Christ who continued to bless the church even in the midst of this disagreement. Even in the midst of separate journeys that focused on one mission. And it's only through the power of Christ It's only through the forgiveness of Christ. It's only through the peace of Christ. It's only through the strength of Christ that we, as the saints of God, can live in unity and in peace and push forward the mission in the midst of all situations as Christ blesses us. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We worship the Lord with our tithes and our offerings.